and welcome. I'm John, and this is Unicor Games of Rain. Guys, <laughs> last video I did was the expanding phone video, okay? Um, I'll get onto that and talk about that a bit more in a second. But as if you're new here, um, well, first thing I'll say is thank you to all new subscribers. You know, absolutely, it means a lot to me. Um, if you're new here, guys, sit back, relax. You know, it's a nice, easy video. Always nice, easy videos, but you'll enjoy this one. Um, if you're regular here, guys, I feel the love. I'll see you in a second, guys. <laughs> so the last video, I did the expanding foam, okay? I went for trying to make a brick wall, template for a brick wall, um, and hand sculpted PVA glue, uh, PV, uh, expanding foam wet, okay? Now I shared it up on the uh, the foam, foam cutters group on Facebook, and there's a lot of comments on there. People talking about, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's cancerous material and it's, you know, it needs to be well ventilated and it's, you know, this and that and blah, 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 blah. Guys, I didn't mention on that video. Obviously, I think you saw me wearing gloves, but I didn't mention that, yes, I've got a mask on, I've got, I've got goggles on. It. You've seen me wear the goggles before when I'm doing, you know, the rugby tour and everything else. Um, the door's open. There's a, you know, big, massive breeze coming in. There's a door over the back there where there's a little, it's not quite up to door frame, so there's a little breeze that comes through, you know, and goes from the other part of the building comes straight through. You know, there's little gaps in the rafters now because all the little the little cedar things are fucking falling down. So there's a little breeze coming through there as well. This is a very ventilated area. Whether I'm using the expanding foam, super glue, poly cement glue, airbrush, spray can, you know, it's uh, it's such a this is the most ventilated area you're gonna unless you're staying on a run a runway with an airplane flying over the top of you, this is a, such a ventilated area. Um now with the expanding foam, especially when I'm doing things like expanding foam, I don't sit there and watch it for like, you know, two or three hours. I'll spray it and then I'll go. So once I've sprayed it, I might be here for five minutes, ten minutes, turn everything off and switching everything down and then go. And then the next day I'll come back and it's all dry. Okay. As you can see. Um so there's, there were a few people on that when I posted that on that group on Facebook, there were a few people that are hating on it a little bit. Guys, I apologize, don't don't hate on it. You know, if you want one, let me know. I'll make you one. It's not a problem. Um, those of you that have, you know, joined the channel, guys, it means a lot to me. Thank you very much. There's three videos a week I roughly do. One's, one of them is a painting video, which is a model painting video. It was seven, seven to ten days. I try to do a train build every week. Sometimes it might be eight days by the time I get up or nine days before the time I get up on, you know, load it up. And I'll do a weekly Wednesday, which is all model focus and everything to do with models. Okay, so just, if you're new here, that's, that's the layout of what we do here. So, today's video, I'm going to annoy people even more. And just sculpt this bad boy and just, you know, try and clean this up and, and do bits and pieces like teeth and clear the eyes out a bit and the nose. And, okay, so. Fantastic. So guys, sit back, watch. And I'll see you in a second. So I've given it a little sculpt, just a, you know, just a round the back here, just tidy up a little bit. Find the teeth out a little bit. I still need to do the nose. But I've decided, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking a giant, a giant's head is nowhere near the size of this. So instead of having this as like a giant skull from some creature that used to live whenever, I think it would actually be better if this was just um, a stone skull, like someone sculpted it in, you know, so it's going to be a piece of terrain, but it's going to be a sculpted skull of somebody's god or, or whatever, you know, whatever it's going to be. Because it's a good line of sight blocker. It's a nice piece, big piece to have on there. So if you're playing, like, you know, Warhammer the Old World or, or Warhammer Fantasy Battles, you've got, you've got to maneuver yourself around it. If you're playing games of 40k with it on the board, it still blocks line of sight. You can move tanks around it and everything else. If you're playing AOS, again, it still blocks line of sight. If you're playing D&D, this could be a nice centerpiece that your guys are going towards and let's do some sort of ritual there or, or 
you know, whatever whatever game, whatever way you want to play the game. Things like Frostgrave and other, you know, other games like that. Again, it's nice, nice piece to have. So I just think, I think if I just turn it into a big, massive piece of stone, skull, yeah, I think that would work better than trying to, I mean, I could do the skull, you know, like it's a human skull, it's not a problem, but I just think they're trying to explain that away, how, what creature is this, where is it, when's it from, you know, why is there other, other parts of it, and blah, blah. So I think that's the best way, I think, going forward. So I'm actually using a sanding, um, sanding pad for the first time. Just cut a piece off and it actually quite, works quite well, it's quite nice. I, I got it originally just to use on models, to, to sand bits of models down, rather than using the scraper. But it works pretty good. Saves me a bit of, saves me on fine bit of sandpaper as well. So. Anyway, I'm going to do a bit more sculpting and I'll see you in a second, guys. So that's pretty mixed, as you just saw on Hyperlapse. Um, and I'll leave it to dry now. Hopefully, it doesn't run any any which way. So I just put my big head in front of the camera then. Um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't run off too much. Because tell you what, it was actually quite difficult to to fill mix that. You know, some of you say some of you new people are gonna say, "What's fill mix?" Fill mix is just filler, normal filler, okay. And you put on your finger. You have a little pot of water, dip it in the water, and then you apply it to what you're doing. Now, if you're making heels and stuff like that, it's good for filling up joints. Anything that joins together, you can fill the joints with. If you're not covering up with bits of, tim bits of timber and bits of other pieces, it's handy to, you know, and I use it to give the effect of stone. Okay, so you'll see this on, on here, when it starts getting painted, you'll be like, oh wow, that's, that's insane. So guys, I have to leave that to dry now. And I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I've undersprayed that. I gave this a little underspray, the other piece. It's a little bit wet. But I thought, you know what? I didn't fill and mix this one. I just gave it an underspray because I want it to be... I'm going to do it stone as well. Because, again, it's a good line of sight block and everything else. But um, because I didn't fill and mix it, the underspray is not, not sticking to it as much. It would it would stick to it. And it go from white to a grey. And then I just give it a couple more coats. But because I want to get it ready for the same time as the skull, I'm just going to give it a black paint with a black paintbrush. Now, there's been a few more comments on, about the last video on, on the Facebook group. Um, more of a concern of, you know, I didn't emphasize you should be wearing this or you should be doing that. I do apologize, guys. Just, you know, and I think at the beginning of this video, I was being a little bit sarcastic. I do apologize. Um, when you're crafting stuff and you're using a blade, for example, there we are, a blade, okay, you're never using the blade towards you, you're always using it away from you, and it becomes uh, just common practice. And you, especially when I'm filming, I forget to say, look, I'll make sure you're doing this because I've, I've said it before, so I just presume that everyone, and I forget that there's new people that have joined the channel and some people are, you know, under 16 and, you know, stuff like that. Um, same as when you're using a blade, you never leave it out like that. You always put the blade away put it down you know I have mentioned this before but I do forget to keep mentioning it so thank you to you guys you know that comment on that on that page I will try and always mention the safety stuff as I'm going along okay I thank you for that so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna crack on with this okay we've got black paint brush I'm gonna give it a black undercoat set it to dry um, this this piece here Okay, is the other wet piece that I was, um, got a skull that I did, and this piece is the piece that I started doing, it just turned to mush. And when it dried, when it cured, you know, the following morning when I, well, the following afternoon when I came in, it turned to a nice big piece. Okay, so I have given it a quick spray over with the underspray, but it's not, it's not sticking to it, drop, you know, nicely. It's just turning it, yeah. So 
I thought, okay, let me just get the black paint onto it and just do my brush. And I've already started it. You see, it's already starting to stick to it nicely. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'll see you soon, guys. Right, so here we are. This is the first one. Okay, and this is the one I started sculpting. It turned to a mush. Okay, so with this one, I didn't filler mix it. I just paint paint with coat. Okay, here's the skull. Okay, now there's a few white bits that I can see in here. Okay, now I can't get them with the brush too well to get them. If I'm getting in there, the brush, the paint's not staying. It's running off, but it's not a big issue because. I'll show you how to blend that away afterwards. I've already done this on channel, but I'll show you again. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go with some swim skull, okay? The beauty of this painter's gray, okay, is it goes on, when you're painting it on, it's like, when it's wet, you can see it. When it dries, it dries like a black, and it looks like it's a black paint. But, um, so even if I show you this now, it looks black, yeah. But as soon as I start adding like an ivory color, it will really just pop really well. Now, the screaming skull is a layer paint, so it does quite a lot of the work for me. As I whack it on, it picks up all the texture on the dry brush, and then what's going to happen is. It's going to um, goes on bright but dulls down, which is great because then when I, if I give a second uh, dry brush here or there, it's going to have brighter areas than dark and darker areas. And normally, I would say to you, with train pieces, always start from the top and work your way down. But with this one, you want to start dry brushing it from the bottom. Okay, so you can get into all the nice little bits. Because of the shape of it, it means I can hold it relatively easy without having to panic or anything. Let's see. Can you see that in there? Can you see how wide that is? I couldn't get a brush in there. I can get this brush in there. But anyway, what you do is you go around the area. Like I've done, really. okay. And as that dulls down the paint, it's going to start to blend in with it, so it won't look. It'll just look, look like it's a white piece of stone. So any bits you miss like that, if you're dry brushing it with like an ivory, even a white, it will just make it blend in really nice. So look, sneaky tip there. The other trick you can do, if it's not, um, if it's not blended in too well, get a lot of stick, a bit of PVA glue, put it into the into the gap, and you get some flock, push some flock into it, and tidy it up. If you don't want to see it, it's fine. So what I'm going to do, let me do a quick little look at this so you can see what I'm, where I'm at already. Just a couple of three and a half minutes of just dry brushing. There's where I'm at already. Okay, for some reason the light's gone really weird. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go off camera and dry brush that, dry brush the skull. And uh, I decided I'm gonna flock, I probably will put some flock in it just to bring the color up a bit more. And I'll come back to you after soon minute guys. All right, so, <clears throat> bit of a bit of flock on there. And now I've gone with the usual combination of clump holders first for a sieve, okay? So I put it in the sieve and I push it for the sieve. Um, then went from some steak grass, four mil I think it was, and uh, yeah, four mil. And then I did some six mil just here and there of wild grass. grass. Now, the PVA is still glue still wet. 
But there's a little trick that I know that I've learned. Hairspray. So with the hairspray, when you spray it on, you spray it on from a distance. Okay. So only the a little bit touches the flock and it stops the flock from blowing everywhere. It holds it down and then when that's wet from the hairspray, you get closer and give it a bit more of a spray. Now this will not melt the foam. Bear in mind it's had paint on it, um, filler mix, just a little wasp in here. Um, and then, you know, so it should be perfectly fine, but it won't melt the foam because you put it on your hair. So, now, now I'm gonna savor this with all aerosols and everything, spray can, rattle can, whatever. Mask, glasses, okay, ventilated area. Even though your spray is at home, it, it doesn't matter. This is, you know, what we're doing here. Just make sure you have the PPE, okay guys? So I'm gonna go off camera and do that because I'll get all the gear on and everything else. I'll see you in a second, guys. All right. Here we are, guys. Now, there's the scale of it. See, special contaminators. And there's the other rock. Let's get close and have a look. Yeah, there's still the hair, the um, hairspray, still a little bit moist, I think. See how close the person can see that? You see, can you see the little the water green, uh, the water droplets on the grass? Sometimes it will dry with that on it. Now, as this is a piece of terrain where you're not going to put models on top. That's going to look amazing if, if the water, the little droplets of water stay on there. It's going to look fantastic. I first discovered that when I was um, putting stack grass on these guys, no, not these guys, but models, and I varnished them and I varnished it too close. So that's, that's another happy accident. Now, just come below, you know, it's not what you think, but I'm not the best sculptor in the world. <laughs> you know, don't, don't think I am, I'm not. But that looks amazing. See the eyes, the nose, the teeth. And here's the other piece. That's this is the piece that turned to mush when I was hand sculpting it. It's, you know, she happens. But anyway, I'll see you in a second, guys. All right, so there's two pieces. Now, I said I'm not the best at uh, hand sculpting anything, or you know, even sculpting or sculpting at all. My green stuff work is uh, limited, um, but I actually like that. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Another good thing about these two pieces, they're freestanding. So I don't have to cut a base and bevel a base and then, you know, glue them together and, and fill and mix it and join, you seal, seal the join between them so it blends in nicely. I don't have to do none of that because they're freestanding. And the way they are, you can put them in any Battlefield you're playing on. So I could even play that in the fantasy game. I could play it in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, but if I did, I could play that. Um Frostgrave. Uh you know, any other event, you know, fantasy game they could be used in. Games of 40k they can be used in. I can even put my gaming boards down and put them on on the game boards. Fantastic. Now just again when you're doing any chemical work. Expanding foam, you know, rattle can, the hairspray, anything that involves chemical, resin, anything that involves chemicals, whether it be even super glue and, and you know, even PVA glue, okay, any sort, any sort of chemicals, always have a ventilated area, mask, goggles, gloves, okay, they're the simple things that you don't need to have gloves for PVA glue, you know, your kids play PVA glue, but, but just you you know sometimes i forget to say these things and i think oh the people are going to know and then afterwards i go no actually i should i should have mentioned that i apologize now this is the second this is the second part really of the hand sculpting video so if you like this video please guys like and subscribe turn on your notifications so i actually like this i'll see you soon guys take it easy